ministry. He clearly identifies that Jesus came to serve. He came to as a servant. Unlike the other three Gospels, Mark cuts to the chase. He moves swiftly abroad, letting his reader know that Jesus came to do work. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Leading up to our focus text, we see that Jesus had already been baptized by John. Uh -huh. He had already fasted for 40 days, mm -hmm. 40 nights, and he had been driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh -huh. Jesus had already been faced with some tumultuous situations. And it's something striking about Jesus right here. He does not come out of the wilderness talking about what he just came out of. All right. Jesus comes out. He's hungry. He's weak. But he comes out of the wilderness swinging. He comes out ready to do his father's business. Wow. Amen. He comes out ready to preach to a world that he knew mm -hmm. couldn't help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. He came to teach to a world that he knew that couldn't help themselves. Mm -hmm. He came to set free and deliver. He came to kill the sick. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to make blind eyes see yes, right. and the lame walk. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that there was a world who couldn't help themselves. Yeah. He knew that there were people that didn't have the fortitude and the knowledge nor the power to help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. This allows me to jump safely into our text and before I mention how Mark swiftly illustrates the steps of Jesus as he steps on the scene for his ministry. And being a student of the word, the four gospels are all a testament of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We all should know that if we graduated from Sunday school. Amen? <laughs> but in each, in each gospel, we find that it's a very unique and very selective accounts recorded by each disciple. Mm -hmm. We know that in the Gospel of John, the disciple records Jesus' encounter with a leper man. It was by a pool mm -hmm. where the lepers usually hung, mm -hmm. waiting for the pool to be served. Yep. Amen. Yep. John focused more on our darling and Savior as God, the Son. And John's approach is more detail-oriented. Never leaving us without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was indeed sent by the Father to save a dying world. Yes, right. You can read the first five verses in the book of John, and it, it, it begins like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and with Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So we know that John is more focused on Jesus being God. His focus is on the deity of Jesus. Amen? No disciple was the same. Jesus was much too wise to choose a like mind. He was much too divine. He was much too wise to choose a like personality. Okay. Okay. He was much too wise for that. Jesus plucked different men with somewhat different backgrounds. Here in the Gospels, we search and study them. You can see clearly individuality. Yeah. Clear as day. That's right. And if I can pause and jump the track just for a second, yeah. I would like to tell our youth to embrace yeah. your yeah. individuality. That's right. You are fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made. Yeah. You are Amen. made in God's image. Yeah. You're not like Sally and don't compare yourself to 
to, 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 to marry him because Peter wasn't like John and John wasn't like Luke and Luke wasn't like Matthew and so on. Be yourself. You were born and original. Embrace yourself. That's right. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's you right. should look in the mirror every each and every morning yeah. and tell yourself that. That's right. Amen. 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 That's right. But in our text on today, we discover a man with a serious condition, a chronic disease, a disease that not only destroyed the body from within, but it would do a number on the person's outer appearance as well. This disease was one which attacked major organs, which in turn attacked the skin. And some worse conditions could, could be as though the skin would be falling off and have open sores and infection would set in. And I forgive me, I don't mean to be that graphic, but I have to paint the picture. And, uh, Come on. Mm -hmm. People suffering from this condition was to be believed cursed from God. Mm -hmm. This disease was believed to be connected to some sort of sin or consequences of a sin. Uh -huh. If a person suffered from this condition, they were not to dwell inside any community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had to live outside the camp. Mm -hmm. They couldn't congregate with others. They couldn't have no physical contact whatsoever with anyone they could not be touched. And in fact, no one dared to touch them. In fact, they had, they could not come within 150 feet of someone that were that was healthy. Amen. They were restricted. They were cast out, talked about, neglected, forgot about. Because Perhaps they dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they made some mistakes. Yeah. Their friends turned around and uh -huh. yes. turned their back yes. and they yes. forgot All about right. it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How many been there? Amen. The church couldn't help. Yeah. Obamacare couldn't help <laughs> because it's being repealed as we speak. <laughs> The best doctors who graduated from the city of Jerusalem School of Medicine yeah, couldn't yeah. help. Yeah, yeah. Teachers and mentors, uh -huh. they couldn't help. Uh -huh. Their family had given up on them. Uh -huh. Leprosy was everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. but a cure was nowhere. Mm -hmm. He knew this man he knew he couldn't help himself. Mm -hmm. However, hope was still present. Yes, right. Right. Hope. Right. Faint, mm -hmm. but it still was present. Mm -hmm. Perhaps his hope was in the wrong things, All right. but hope was still present. Right. He still held a cure of hope. Mm -hmm. right. Perhaps his hope was in this pool where other leopards would congregate. Maybe he still had hope in a long lost friend that had deserted him. And maybe during the darkest hours of the night, maybe he hoped to die. Because his condition consumed him, smothered him. He's ignored all because of this condition, all because of his circumstances. And most were not born with this disease, so you can imagine how life was before they fell victim to their circumstances. Amen? Amen. You see, as long as you're achieving, you're succeeding, you've got it going on, you can't stop the people from coming around. You can't stop the phone from ringing. Go ahead. You can't stop from the text messages flowing through your phone. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. As long as you got it going on. Yeah, I think you got it going on. But let you fall on hard times. Amen. Let you fall victim to your circumstances. 
circumstances. Let the job lay you off. And you begin to ask people for $5 for you and your gas. It's in these times that we find out who our true friends are. It's in these times that we find out who is willing to roll up their sleeves and, and, and get in the trenches. It's in these times. It's in these times where your faith is tested. Uh -huh. Go ahead, go ahead. I heard a song that troubling times yeah. don't last all the way. That's right. That's right. Don't and last all the way. if I can correct myself, you don't have to be experiencing a, a, a bottom situation. Mm -hmm. God can begin to start elevating you, mm -hmm. and you will see people starting to disperse. Yeah. You will see people starting to get a, a spirit of jealousy, yeah. a spirit of hate. Yeah. As long as you right here with them, yeah. and they can't get back, or oh, it's going to get better. Yeah. As soon as it starts to get better, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I've lived it. But in this text, we find a man who is troubled. We find a man suffering from his condition. We find a man suffering and he is deeply in need. Our text says he comes to Jesus kneeling and bowing at the feet of Jesus. There's something about being at the feet of our Lord. He utters the words, if, if you are willing, you can make me clean. When we pray, we should adapt and demonstrate the attitude of this leper. He says, Lord, if you are willing. Uh -huh. But before he makes his request known, he approaches Jesus in a humble way. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he comes bowing and kneeling at the feet of Jesus. Uh -huh. Go ahead. It's something about the way a person prays. Jesus is not to be bought. By our prayers. That's right. But this leper demonstrates not my will, Jesus, but your will. Uh -huh. And this shows me that God, this man knew that God owes us nothing. And if he gives us anything, it's all because of his grace. It's not, it's not because of what you do and how good you how good you did it. Amen. They say, the Bible says, he comes in worship. He comes in awe. He comes with the spirit of expectancy. This man with leprosy breaks all kinds of laws. He's inside the camp after being cast out. He's well within 150 feet of others who were not sick. And he has the audacity to believe. He has the nerve to ask. Mm -hmm. He has the audacity to be violating the personal space mm -hmm. of Jesus. <laughs> right through here. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you may need to give me some room. You don't know what kind of condition I'm in. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> But this man with leprosy, he could not help himself. You see, it's something about when you're broken and when you're tired of perhaps living the way that you've been living. When you're tired of being treated the way you've been treated. You're tired of the condition that you know you can't help yourself. That's right, that's right. <laughs> you don't care when you get to this this place uh, in your life. Uh, you do not care about public opinion. <laughs> you don't care.
care what people got to say Come about you. Yep. You don't care how they want to judge you. Go ahead. You don't care about the whispers behind your back. You don't care about the self-sabotaging things that you do because of God before you. You don't care. All you know is that you have to get to the feet of Jesus. And what you think of me is really none of my business. Walls. Amen. 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 Amen.
and minister a word to, 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 to some of the most wretched, to some of the most people that have been cast aside, have been forgotten about. Amen. 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 But here it is, our, our darling Savior. He reaches out his hand and he touches this man. He doesn't think twice about his condition. He just said, I am willing. And Jesus could have easily commanded with his voice that this man be clean. Surely he did it for a dead man named Lazarus who had been dead four days and his body began to stink. His body began to rot and smell from decay. But this man touched this man who society did not want to touch. He touched this man that society had broke off this was a man that the priest wouldn't even touch. But Jesus being our high priest, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, he touches the man. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says instantly he was set free. Instantly he was delivered. Instantly he was made whole. In this story, it wasn't looking good before verse 41. This story was dark and dismal and and, 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 and bleak and helpless and this man was burning down he couldn't help himself mm. Jesus lends a hand Jesus is the only one that could help yeah. when nothing else how many know <laughs> when nothing else <laughs> could help it was love uh -huh. that no, lifted me yeah. Yeah. it was love yeah. that picked me up it was and this miracle performed by Jesus, it came with some instructions. Jesus tells the man to go to Jerusalem and don't tell no, tell no one about what I've just done. In other words, he told him to keep his mouth shut. Amen. Go straight to the priest. Not as soon as Jesus and his entourage gets out of ears reach, this man begins to tell everyone he came in contact with. He began to tell Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Like he had just totally forgot that Jesus told him, do not tell no one. Go straight to the priest. But this man couldn't contain himself. This man was excited. Yeah. And let me tell you, it's something about being touched yeah. by the Lord. Yeah. It's something All about right. having a true yeah. encounter yeah. with God. Yeah. When you've been touched yeah. by God, it'll make you love more. Yeah. Amen. When you've been truly touched by God, yeah. it'll make you judge less. Yeah. When you've been truly touched by has done for me. Yeah. When you've been touched by God, yeah. you get a little patience. Yeah. When you've been touched by God, you want to help everybody you meet. All right. Yeah. This man, he couldn't contain himself. That's right. Yeah. That's all right. It's something about the touch of Jesus. Yes. Just one touch. It's something about the touch of Jesus. <laughs> God had truly smiled on him, and most of all, he couldn't help himself. Well, he had to tell someone. Well, he had to let it be known. Yeah. He had to praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I couldn't help myself, God reached down and lifted me up. Yeah. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's a bridge. He's water yes. when I'm thirsty. Yeah. He's bread when I'm hungry. Oh. Like my grandma would say, it, I know it was the Lord. Yeah. When I think 
of the goodness of Jesus. My soul cries out, but not only does my soul cry out, my eyes begin to water. Not only does my eyes begin to water, my hands begin to clap. My feet won't stay still. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I can't keep it to myself. It's like Jeremiah said, it's like fire. Amen. 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 Amen.